There is a new craze sweeping Africa. A craze that targets young men. That feeds on our love of football. Winning ticket! And that sells us the hope of a better life. Win, win, win! I feel good. I just feel like I'm the man, I'm the guy. But is there a dark side to the thrill of sports betting? I don't want this. I'm going on a journey across Uganda to find out what happens when global companies target some of the poorest and most vulnerable people in my country. There's only one emerging market. It's Africa. It's the final frontier. Do we, the football fans, really understand the odds we are up against? Would you classify me as a betting addict? What are our governments doing to protect us? There's more in life than just winning money. And who are the real winners? The algorithm will try its best to always make sure the house wins. Africa Championship is going to be the seeker. You bet where the winners play. We love our sports in Uganda, and most of all, we are football man. Mobila, football, 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 football. We also love to bet on matches. I'll bet probably my all up keep every day. When there is money. <laughs> every month in Uganda, we are betting millions of dollars. Almost all of it on international soccer. We are winning. Sende zina wangu la Kenya inji zia aligiri mituwaru chinana mbusa ambu. 760,000 Uganda shilling. 1 million at most. And we are also losing. Sende zina kafiru wa mbeti. Zilinga million ya vili muta. My whole school fee is too short. My name is Collins Muhinda. I'm 25 years old. I've been crazy about soccer since I was a kid. I'm a very huge Chelsea fan and we're gonna win tonight. Come on, Chelsea. I've also been betting on football matches since I was at school. BBC Africa Eye asked me to show them what sports betting looks like from the Panthers' point of view. I've been playing this game for a long time and I thought I knew everything there was to know. It turns out I was wrong. Oh, as you can see, that's a king signpost. It's a betting house. That's where people go to make money. If you want to double your money as fast as possible, you can just go there, make a stake, and make more money. We have top bet, we have kings, we have premier, we have fortune bet, we have... Jeez, there are just so many. When I'm in my good moods, I never miss a day. If I'm lucky, I win. If I'm not lucky, uh, I lose. When you win, you feel really good, like you're making quick cash. Winning ticket! I stake 2,000, Chelsea came back and won the game, which means I just won 7,500. It's really hard to find a job here, even if you're a graduate like me. So sports betting seems like a good way of earning a bit of extra money. The ideal consumer that started gaming in Africa is what we call the low-income earners. Okay, because obviously they look at gaming as a, as a form of hope. You know, I will use gaming to maybe earn some money, to maybe possibly change my lifestyle. I'm headed to my hometown, Barara, where I started betting 10 years ago. Back then, I only used to bet small amounts, and there were not so many shops. Now, they are everywhere. So this is the famous Liverpool house where all betting houses are here in Barrow. Near my old high school is the shop where I first placed a bet. So we would come here every evening from school after classes to press bets. So basically I have many memories of this place and I feel that uh, these people owe me so much because it, if it hadn't been for my efforts, I don't think uh, this shop would actually be here. But it was illegal because we used to escape from school, I would say. We were young. Actually, I think I was like 15, 14, 15 there. They never used to ask for ID. Back then, no law stopped kids betting. But in 2016, the minimum betting age was set at 25. Today, the fixtures that are up, we have Arsenal Newcastle, we have St. Etienne, Nimes, and Hapoel Tel Aviv. These are Israel teams. 
This is the Showa win. <laughs> so if you want to bet, you can just get a piece of paper and move to the counter and stake a bet. This is the machine where we used to press our bets on. And up to now, I still ask myself how it used to connect to the internet. I'm so happy to see this machine because, wow, it's been so long. It's been so long. Jesus. BBC Africa Eye has been investigating the betting industry in Uganda for more than a year. Lydia Namubiru is a data journalist who is amazing with numbers. She says she has some interesting information to share with me. But first, I'm going to teach her how to bet. What's the biggest amount you've ever lost? It was three million. I staked no. that and I lost it. Three million? Yes. Like, was it on one bet? Or one was... bet. I don't get it. Mm. You lose three million and you're still bet again. <laughs> Why? Maybe, you know, today might be my lucky day. But with luck, you never know. It's, it's, it's not in your hands. <laughs> luck is never in your hands. Yeah. You can use mobile money, really betting and gaming. So you choose which betting company you use. I acknowledge that I am over 25 years old. So I say yes. Yes. I can bet now. Get hold of a phone line and you can bet easily in Uganda, even if you're under 25. Almost everyone I know has a smartphone now, so we can bet anytime, anywhere. This is one of the youngest countries in the world, and I know so many people who bet underage. Back in Kampala, I found some street kids who bet and asked them how easy it is to get through the doors of actual betting shops. Jackson, what are you talking about? I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to Franco, si ba kapapola? Yes, sir. So ba kukiriza wana yeah. okuyinge la kumiaka jo? Banzi kiriza. Otero sibira wa wana mchitundu chini? Nusibira wa gula kumbeti. Yeah. Wa gula? Eh. Yeah. So ba kukiriza no yinge la no stepa kusaba ID ona? Tewa ina cheba ansaba. He says they don't ask for his ID or anything else. These young guys came to Kampala to chase big dreams. But now they sleep at the city's main bus station and hunt for scraps to live on. This is one of the poorest um, regions in the world. So when you bring up something that brings hope or force hope to the populace uh, with the idea that they can make a living out of it, definitely they will get hooked. My friends generally earn about $100 a month. And they are the lucky ones with jobs. So many of us are hustling, looking for chances to make a better life. Millions more of us are out of work and desperate. There has been a kind of story, narrative, that has been really convincing for some people who have you know, fallen into the trap of thinking that this can be a, a sort of living, making a living through gambling. The reason why I bet is just to win money, just to try my luck and get some money. Money is never enough to cater for all your needs in life. So how do you do it? How do you increase the money? Maybe you try betting. We have worries about employment. That's why we engage in sports betting. It's so worried to be without a job. When I win, I feel, I feel good. I just feel like I'm the man, I'm the guy. They are really out there looking for those odds. Because they keep seeing these stories in advertisement that, oh, I used 1,000 shillings and got um, 20,000 shillings. And, and they actually believe that it could be them. You see adverts for betting companies everywhere in Uganda. And it seems that the companies really target us young men. Seeing the kind of market that we are, you cannot just sit back in your office and just look on and wait for people to use your platform. You must go out there and look for them. Betway is one of Uganda's biggest betting companies. Our first approach is to teach and educate people how our product works. Now that takes some time. In teaching, you have to make people trust you, people love you, and want to use you at the same time. 
we do educate and talk to our players that look, we offer you the games, entertainment, it's fun, we want you to play with us because it's a business. But also you have to do it responsibly. We don't want you to put your house at sale on sale. I found out about Betway on Facebook. I saw a praise being given to someone who had played jackpot and he had won money. Afterwards, I felt motivated, I felt encouraged. I should try this. I opened an account from Betway. They gave me 100% bonus on my first deposit. That's why I love Betway so much. This kind of marketing is a game I know pretty well because I used to work as a promoter myself. I was paid to sign up new customers for one of the big betting companies. I was given that job because I had knowledge about this. I knew all their products. I knew how to get people into this. And obviously when you're recruiting people to start betting, you tell them the good stories. You can win so much money in a day. You know, your life can get transformed. We have these offers, we have nice jackpots, enticements that entice people to get into the business. I'm not the only person who has been paid to promote betting. Local celebrities work with big betting companies as ambassadors for the industry. Ivan Kalanzi is a well-known Ugandan sports journalist. All these companies that have been coming in, I mean, they look for Kalans. When the likes of Champion Bet come in, they look for Kalans. When the likes of Lori Bet come in, they look for Kalans. Tugamba Champion Bet, I'm a tabi manji nyagenja urum Uganda. No recho Tugamanti mutsera chino, nandana mutsera chino. Genda awali etabiria Champion Bet, uwe sibire kumpire yonyumirwe. My main work is to promote the company. But when a company has certain products that they want to promote, I promote the products of the company, not promoting betting. Yes. Actually, we discourage betting. The thing is, some of the deals on offer are just so tempting. Often you get your first bet for free. And if you haven't pressed a bet for a while, they give you more free bets. The highest rollers get VIP status. The more you put down, the more bonuses they give you. My friend Tyson and I started betting together at school. He was betting so much that he became a real VIP better. I was like a VIP person. You know, they, we had our sections. You have your laptop, you do your research and all that. So what happened is I started betting huge amounts of money. And then I lose, I lose, I lose, I lose like 100. I realized this is the trend. I win huge amounts, I bet huge amounts. So at the end of it all, I've not won. I've just been given a portion of my money that they have been chopping on a daily basis, you know? When you understood that, you decided to quit. Actually, what made me quit betting so much is the introduction of virtual games. I don't ever bet on virtual games, but they are really popular. You bet on quick play, computer-generated matches. Virtual games, is it was so quick in a way that a football match you have to wait for 90 minutes. Virtual games, it's the next three minutes. You either a winner or a loser. I was an addict. I have refused to say that word from the beginning, but I was an addict. 
I think that's a level of addiction that you reach at. Like at level I reached at and we, we got addicted. You still do bet? Actually, you have not told me about that. I don't know. Do you still bet? Yep. Okay, you can say that I've reduced on the level of taking risks. Yes, yes. But uh, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. I, I want to quit betting. Maybe it's true that I found it hard to give up betting. But I'm not the only one who's struggling with this. I went to Makindia, a neighborhood of Kampala, to meet some of the guys who drive Uganda's famous Boda Boda motorbike taxis. They told me how bad things have got for them. Mubet, Chichi Nene Chofiri Ruamu. Nafiri Wamu Pichizange. Zali Bid. God, in Nechi Vina Chengend of Funa Chamitwan or Sango. Hm, Dona sent the same name. Nenduara no Musuj. Akaka de Konanga Bakaku, Nabakaku, Munakeza. Bid. But even no one get Naria dictated in such a Sorakuba Koshirai or Nachan Konga named Sanga Ganesem Susina. In the local barbers, some guys told me that betting is a habit. They just can't kick. TV is the only one who's in his to see the case. It's how you have sense and I can take a Mazaro. Zibura no Zibura. Tia Walaka Gulinanga Muzim. Mashtegera. Kugambio is okay up my channel called Abrund in your centers. No gamma let us see Japulinia yo. Naked to Nichulino Murundio, Gomo, no English yumba. No Gana Korachi, Zanyaza. And at the way while you call Piro and Nang. Chef to get to Saba, which turned to Jaffe, Mutuyambe, Zaram Polici, and Jim Stone, and Lemigi Jacobera. Nay, Kubine Yuma, Avant, Kurika Varia. But on you, a lot of people seem to be losing a lot of cash. I'm wondering how much we are actually betting in Uganda. So I asked Lydia to help me find out. We analyzed data, the Uganda Revenue Authority, tax payments by betting companies in 2018. What we learned is that in a week, Ugandan planters, people like yourself, put more than a million dollars into betting. The National Gaming Board has said that we planters win back over 70% of the money we stake. But Lydia found something quite different. So let's say this is the $56 million Ugandan punters, such as yourself, put into betting, um, betting in 2018. First of all, the government gets 18% of that money in taxes. The betting companies kept 43% for their business expenses and profits. So what does that leave for you guys, the Panthers? 39%. You do win back enough to keep you coming, but the company is ahead of you. All of this at one point was your money. So now this is what it looks like between the government and the companies, and this is yourselves. So for you guys, it really isn't a great rate of return. It's, 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 it's a huge loss. We the Panthers are winning back less than half of what we are putting in. No wonder people are hurting. Back in Makindye, the local councillor, Joseph Lubanga, is feeling their pain and their anger. The betting it is affects my people, which I'm representing. Have you checked all these people that they are above 25 years? And that's why, to a girl of Kubaso Mesa, to Babuli, and to Muntu, who goes to see them, you can talk kids about being a machine of betting. Change it, okay. Tonight, the Tuaga of Baso Mesa, Mutagere, betting, Chichegeza. Bagama, no person is under 25 years allowed to enter these premises. 
musoka kulagayo national id za mu musirika azibaba azibabuza abasigale tuzina okay batumaliriza tuchizude nti abavubuka banji olwembereri mugwanga nti tetuina mirimu siwe kiri Never jena bomo vude owa wa kuruko. Okuza sawa wenda. Minemu. Okuza wa kuruko. Paka sawa ngani ya. Tekele bagamba sawa nyia. Kanti kaka tia na na pete sija kuba. Sawa ngani ya. Bocha tu be rawano. Ani adiya kufi. Kumani mwa adiya kufi kusete nyingi. Kadi setwa kalo kubuza. Beti ingeni umwa gadebe rumu yuganda bote umwa gadebe. So since ambia. Pija kwe kula mo muri munga fa babuka misamu kwenye katika shule kula chini kwa babeti kwa babuka cha ina bi na kasi ndoka piketu kuna ngati kwa kula nzokuwa angi baadhi nsa ba government etu yambi etu jiro beti ingeni. I don't want this one. Yeah? This. This. I don't want. This. I don't want. I don't want this. I don't want. I don't want this. I don't want this. Be, be, be cool. The local councillor is doing his best to protect young people in the neighborhood. But the guys in the barber shop told me that their member of parliament sees things differently. Alan Sewanyana is a sports journalist who was voted in as an opposition MP in 2016 and appointed shadow sports minister. He's popular with young voters and he is a keen footballer himself. And until January 2019, he wrote a betting tips column. When the government made a surprise threat to crack down on the betting business and maybe kick out some of the foreign companies, Sewanyana stood up in parliament to defend the industry. It is an industry that fetches Uganda almost more than 50 billion Ugandan shillings in taxes. We can only guide, we can only set guidelines, Madam Speaker, to guide the way sports betting is done in Uganda. But banning sports betting will endanger some lives of some people. Back in Makindye, some of the guys who voted for Sewanyana are getting angry that their MP is still pushing sports betting. They say his tips encourage them to bet. But they are not winning. On a level, I have a good TV room, not Rubana Samba, or you and me, Peter. Gamba, a rock man, you again a cubasin. Now, no quarters or dinner, not a couple money a cubasin. Google no cuguangas and a cubby money. Catigova to Funye, at a yavas as should do. I went to the local TV station where I say one stars on a sports show to ask him why he thinks betting is a good thing for Uganda. We have heard comments from the government in regards to banning betting, and majorly they said foreign-based companies. What is your take on that? I thought uh, this came as a view uh, in need to encourage Ugandans to invest more in the betting business. Betting makes more money in form of profits than in expenditure. Even my program is, some of our programs are sponsored by betting company. Through such sponsorships, the country gain. But not everyone agrees. Many Ugandans are starting to say that sports betting needs to be much more closely controlled. State Minister for Finance, David Bahati, has promised tighter regulation. But when we went to see him, he had a very surprising suggestion of how the government planned to do that. If possible, if we think that uh, it is uh, feasible, even the government itself can have a company that can invest in this and then we have better regulations. Set up a company by government, set the rules, monitor them well. So if government comes in, then the, the, the regulations uh, can be done better. 
should you expect a government entity to join the business of uh, gaming and betting in Uganda soon? It's an option on the table. And uh, once a final decision has been made, uh, then the whole world will know. I was really surprised by the minister's proposal. But it looks like the Ugandan government is seriously considering opening a state-owned betting company. I wanted to ask him, because you see, the government is so concentrated on how people are spending their money. Why, like, why don't they concentrate on how they can, how people can make money? They can regulate, but you know, it's, they have a long way to go. And it's funny how they are entering the business as well. Wow, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> <laughs> to view it in a perception of alcohol. You're like, okay, people are getting drunk. I don't want people to get drunk. It's bad. Then tomorrow you're opening a liquor shop. They should accept that this is a lucrative business and they want to make business in it. They want to make money. They shouldn't use the moral part of saying, you know, we care about people. No. If you care about people, then you don't go in the business. You put an end to the business. When the government threatened to crack down on the betting industry, they said it was to protect Uganda from companies shipping profits abroad. I asked Lydia where these profits might be going. This is more than 3,000 pages of company documents. We did our best to establish every betting company that exists and is active. Of the 44 betting companies, 29 are majority foreign owned. In fact, 18 are entirely foreign owned. Lydia explained to me that there are shareholders from all over the world. I was amazed. I never thought that our money was ending up in bank accounts in China, India, Malta, Turkey, the UK, and the British Virgin Islands, to name just a few. Most people think that these are companies from here. Like, they have no idea that they are foreign companies. Some of these companies are owned by entities in what we call tax havens. A lot of those places are also really well known for secrecy, for hiding the ultimate owners of these companies. So if something goes wrong with their operations here in Uganda, it's very difficult for the authorities here or even the punters here to find the person to hold accountable. Lydia found out that at least 10 betting companies in Uganda were under investigation by the tax authorities, who suspect them of avoiding millions of dollars in tax. Profits in overseas tax havens seem a long way away from James's experience of sports betting. <laughs> So is anyone looking out for people like James? I found out that the organization whose job it is to protect us punters is the National Gaming Board. Gaming Board, its main mandate is to protect the public against adverse effects of gaming. I I pressed my first bet when I was 14 years old. Okay. What have you put in place to make sure that minors are not betting? When we interviewed Ediga Agaba, he told us that the board is working hard to clean up the betting sector. I was relieved to hear that someone was trying to protect the Panthers. But just three months later, there was a shocking development. That is this man going to court today, Agaba. Edgar Agaba was arrested and then charged with stealing more than 700 million shillings. That's nearly 200,000 US dollars. What's more, he and his team had claimed that some of the money was for a workshop to educate border border drivers about betting responsibly. He has denied all charges, but has been suspended from office pending criminal proceedings. This is more worrying to find that someone who hates a body that should be helping out people, regulating, doing what? If he's doing this, then there, is, there, is, there are many brain spots in the gaming business here in Uganda, and, it, and it's alarming. It's alarming. If he's doing this, then whom should we trust? If the pundits aren't protecting us, if the politicians aren't protecting us, 
if even the regulator isn't protecting us, then really, who can we trust? I've been starting to feel a bit guilty about all the people I've encouraged to bet over the years. Not just when I was a betting company agent, but also friends at school and campus. Until now, I've never seen betting as something very damaging. But I'm starting to understand that so many of us are losing out. And that even when we lose, we keep going back for more. Albert Era is a recovering alcoholic. He runs Focus on Recovery Uganda, which works with addicts. He's starting to see a lot more people with gambling problems and says that many of them don't even know they're addicted. I've never seen an addict or one I would call an addict. So you, the professionals who deal with this, at what level do you think that someone is? Well, to, to, to determine that someone is addicted, there must be an element of dependence. Money that you should have prioritized elsewhere, but you find yourself being unable to hold back Mm -hmm. and you're still taking it to gamble because you believe that somehow you might win a large amount and recoup mm -hmm. what you've spent. Are you a gambler per se? I, I, I enjoy it. I love betting. If anyone asked me, I would say I'm not an addict. Would you classify me as a betting addict or someone who's just trying to stop uh, a behavior? I will take you through an assessment. So how long has it been going for? Uh, I think it's uh, nine years now. Nine years is a long time. Has it have had any significant positive effect in your life? Positive? Something you can pinpoint and you say, betting got me this or got me here. I wouldn't be here or I wouldn't have achieved this without betting. No, uh -huh. not really, because I stake I've been staking little money, so I've, I've been winning small win amounts. But have the little amounts increased? Did you start, for example, with 500 every weekend, and now you're doing 2,000? Yes, because as the income increases, mm. you obviously, you big, there is a, there is a saying okay, in you betting, which says, bet big, win big. Exactly. Which all the companies emphasize. But then I reached a point in fact, I reached a point where I had to, to re-evaluate re myself. Yeah. There's, I reached a point where I lost so much, lost so much in betting. Just the fact that you had to reach a point and self-evaluate because it was inflicting heavy damage on your finances, point to a problem. And yet, instead of quitting, you just try and play safe. Then it, in, in itself, it means that you have a problem quitting. Mm -hmm. You're hooked onto the habit. Do you see any positive in the loss of money? No, only negativity. So, yeah, so. But what of those people who win so much and? See, here I would advise your calling to focus on yourself. No, not others. Not others. Wow. I've gotten services for free today. <laughs> I've gotten services for free today. I have so much to think about. It was really mind-blowing, uh, things I didn't know about. Anyway, for me, what I can tell everyone who bets, maybe is he should, because you can never know at what level you're addicted or what, is it's better to weigh the negatives and the positives and be a judge of yourself to whether what you're doing you should stop or you should continue doing. Have a thing to think about, for real. Have a thing to think about. A lot of people are making a lot of money out of our betting habits. After talking with Albert, I started to realize that problem gambling for us punters means even bigger profits for the betting companies. It's a multi-million dollar industry 
whose business model relies on us just betting more and more. I know a lot of people who have lost big, but back in my hometown Balala, Lydia had found a story of someone who had lost everything. I had a friend of mine, Masias. If you can take the good characteristics of a human being, they can best describe him. Mm, Matthias is someone who started from a village. But for him, he said, I grew from village, I will not stay in village. I will not live in village. This is where you used to stay. This is where you used to stay. Yeah, this is our yes. hostel. Oh. So to come here, check on your friends. Everyone here, I knew everyone. He used to sleep here. Yes. Yeah. For me, like a week after the incident had happened, I was fearing passing here. A moment of silence. We can, we can move on. Mm. We'll get out of here. Yeah, can I get out of here? This man was supporting us, you know, and I was also supporting us, you know. So whenever it would win, we'd be happy together. Whenever it loses, we'd say, eh, today it wasn't our day, we've lost. Whenever we would want to watch matches, maybe at night, we opt to go to a town outside the campus. Do you know sports betting? Yes, you, we could do like, stake like 200,000, then you look for how it can multiply. The money that was supposed to be for rent or for fees would do different things. So we, we used to call it multiply effect. We could try to multiply the money. We continued losing, losing, losing. But now I used to stake on Southern only. Sometimes you would stake, you'd not show me the stakes the you had put. I would see him like saying, I've lost a lot. He decided to, to use the money that was supposed to be for tuition fees. He took the money in town in a sporting company, it's called the Liverpool. And he, he put there all his money and he, he lost the money. He told me, so I'm not going to manage to pay tuition. We get all sorts of uh, financial challenges with students. 60% of those, uh, it's all about sports betting being the challenge of why they don't have the tuition. So the last day we talked, he said I'm going to go to the village because he told me that if I can face, if I can, we can have face-to-face -face conversation, then he can raise that money. It was around two, and seven hours there, we received bad news that he had taken poison. I was touched, like, I see us. He the one was taking poison, why? They rushed him to Tumbalawi, we fell hospital. We went to the home. Private wing, the emergency. We checked on the guy, and the guy was like was breathing, but was on oxygen. So later, the guy passed away, and that was the end of uh, my friend. So I feel like this uh, feel so touched because this is some guy I lost, and I couldn't imagine that. I lost this guy. So up to now, the guy is on my heart. It was bad. And it's one of those questions you don't want to answer. But seeing that you've lost a student, is kind of so emotional and it hurts. When you see someone now winning 100 million just on one thousand, you think you're going to be like him. You think that miracles are going to be done. So at the end of the day, he had to walk into himself into that. You feel like coming back and telling every student to stop sports betting 
because there's more in life than just winning money. Gambling is just making money out of people, out of desperate people, I would say. Gambling is for the rich and students are not rich. To me, they should put an embargo on students not to bet. For as long as you're a student, you're in school, even if you're 65, you're a student, no betting. That's my, that's my opinion that I would give them, yes. I couldn't believe how Matthias' story had ended. The thing is, I also lost half my college tuition on just two beds. I had to delay my graduation by a year. It was terrible seeing my friends graduate without me. It made me cut down on how much I was betting, but I never stopped. I feel like I've been lucky over the past six months, but I'm starting to wonder how much have I actually won. I asked Lydia to take a look at the data from my online account. These are all the transactions between you and the betting company. So basically, in one month, you place more than 50 bets. What, 54 bets? <laughs> For 55 <laughs> bets? More so bets than there are days in a month. I couldn't believe how many times I'd placed bets. But the real shock came when we analyzed my profits and losses. Yeah? So. You put in 600, nearly 700,000. On, on your luck alone, one, a million. However, you did not draw out that million. Yeah. The platform encourages you to put it back. To put it back. Over six months, I had deposited 693,000 shillings from my mobile money account. That's nearly $200. I had made winnings of nearly a million shillings. But although it felt like I was winning online, I had actually made a loss. And then in the end, you came out with a loss of 51,000. <laughs> How can someone even know like all this? Like, <laughs> but I, and I think that's why betting works because a lot of the people who participate don't have all this knowledge. Mm. Alan Jagwe knows exactly how the companies play this trick. He used to write the algorithm for an online betting platform. Betting is a sense of you are spending. Man, it, it's, it's a spend. Do not think of it as an investment. Think about it this way. The companies are in business. They're there to make profit for their stakeholders or shareholders. Uh, that's their primary goal. They try as much as possible to limit um, their losses. The algorithm will try its best to always make sure the house wins. The only way that I would propose you make a living out of betting is work for a betting company. Lots of people I've met really do believe that they can increase their small incomes through betting. When you feel the buzz of a win, I get it. It's hard to remember that these companies are focused on their own profits and they are not always playing it straight. For so many of us, our love of football is what got us into betting in the first place. We start kicking a ball around as soon as we can walk. The world's greatest footballers are our heroes. And we love watching the matches from the top European leagues. So how does football fit into all of this? One of the greatest footballers of all time is former Arsenal and England captain Tony Adams. He's been speaking out against gambling sponsorship in football. We managed to arrange a call with Tony so I could ask him more. It's ringing. Oh, finally, we, we meet. I, I would call this meeting. Fantastic. So do you like football? 
Some might. Good. And what team do you support? Oh, I'm a Chelsea fan. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Following a legendary soccer career, Tony Adams founded the Sporting Chance Clinic after fighting his own very public battles against addiction. You say that people should like start talking about these companies not coming yeah. into football yeah. and affecting the game. The, there's a real problem if you normalise, if you make it acceptable that football and gambling are together. If you think it's part of the same great product, then kids and stuff are going to think, oh, it's OK to bet. And there is very, very bad consequences to that for the addict. Tony told me that over 30 football clubs in the UK now have some kind of financial relationship with betting companies. We looked into this and found that for the 2019-2020 season, Half of the Premier League clubs and 70% of championship clubs have gambling companies as shirt sponsors. I think it's very similar to alcohol. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Um, very similar to the alcohol in the 90s um, and maybe cigarettes before that. The industry was, was kind of getting a lot of money into their clubs through um, this advertisement and this relationship. Betting companies operating in Africa are also starting to sponsor African teams. And Kenya-based sport PESA even has partnerships with English sides, including as shirt sponsors for Everton. It's become very acceptable in the UK. Then they think, it's all OK here, everything's fine, great, yeah, let's use the uh, sponsorship from the gambling companies. So that's why I think it's gone worldwide. It's gone into Africa and they've accepted it. And as betting comes under greater scrutiny in countries like the UK, firms are looking for young football fans elsewhere in the world. And they are chasing business across Africa, from Cote d'Ivoire to Kenya, from Liberia to Zimbabwe. Football's global. You know, I think it goes into about 126 territories, you know. Premier League is revered around the world. This game is, is massive. And it has a um, massive effect on, on kids uh, around the globe. So um, if you normalise gambling in that and put it side by side, there is extreme risk of that kid's going to think it's OK to gamble. In the last 10 years, the technology has gone through the roof so they can access from their phone. They've got the buzz. So... And Tony thinks the time has come for drastic action. Regulating the governing body of the FA needs to say, look, within five years, no gambling, adverts, advertising in football. There's no place for it. It's, it's really a pleasure, like, talking to you. I'm uh, Arsenal, Chelsea. Cup final, huh? Yeah. So we meet in Baku and we are going to win. <laughs> and we don't need to gamble on it, huh? No, 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 no. No. There's no point. Just friendly rivalry, it's enough, huh? It's enough. We did meet in Baku for the Europa League final. And for the first time in many years, I did not place a bet on my team in such a big match. Whoa. I feel it's time for me to take another direction, to put an end to my betting story. Yeah, I've had this app for many years now, but I've not been using it because uh, time reached and I realized that uh, I don't need to bet anymore. So basically today, I'm getting done with my app. I'm parting ways with it. So bye bye Betway. I don't think I'm going back. The rich. Oh, so painful. Boom, there it goes. Chelsea is winning. Football, you never know it. But for real, to Arsenal fans, it looks like the game is over. I already thought that betting was all about luck. And that like with football, you just never know. But now it seems to me that it's a lot less about luck and much more about profit. I've come to realize that betting is a game that we can never really win. Chelsea!
and the Susi for Asnoa full time in Baku. Who could have predicted this? So instead, I'm going to stick with the best game of all, football.